We start with a point. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to the Imagining the Tenth Dimension video blog. My name's Rob Bryanton. This time we're going to look at three poll questions from the text version of my blog, and they're all somewhat related. We're calling this entry Right Angles and Reality. And we'll start with poll 80, which asks, what is now? Answer number one was, even though I know it took years for a star's light to reach me, that light is reaching me now. And answer number two, now is what's entangled with this very instant, and that's how the quantum world's spooky action at a distance effects occur. The poll ended on April 23rd, 2011. 21.2% chose answer number one, while the remaining 78.8% chose answer number two. I already remarked in my blog entry for photons and free will that I was cheating a bit on this question, as in my opinion, the correct option, and answer number three saying both of the above are correct, wasn't even provided as a choice. Why did I do this? In my experience, whenever there's an all of the above choice in a poll question like this, that's the more likely one to be correct. And that's why I didn't provide that option here, because I wanted people to think carefully about their answer. After all, what's wrong with answer number one? Isn't a distant star's light reaching me now, even though I know that the light I'm seeing is actually from an image of that particular star that's many years in the past? I could have stated answer number one more forcefully to ask if people agree that the now of when that photon was generated and the now of when it reaches my eye are, from the photon's perspective, both simultaneous. I wonder how much that would have changed the results. This takes us to poll 81, which asks this question. Light is at right angles to space-time. Do you agree with this point of view? The poll ended on May 20th, 2011. 59.9% agreed, while 40.1% disagreed. This poll question concludes a series of questions that all tied back to the light has no speed entry I've been talking about, and a diagram that I've shown a number of times about the two kinds of now that our reality is created from in the fifth dimension. Roughly three out of five visitors to my blog were willing to agree with this poll question's very broad statement, which is admittedly a challenging concept to wrap our heads around at first. I'm glad to see how many people are coming along for the ride. In the video that accompanied poll 76, no space, no time, no mass, there were some visuals in that entry which might also help people to visualize this idea. Ultimately, what we're trying to get to here is a way of imagining the underlying fabric from which our universe or any other springs. And that takes us to poll 82, which asks this deceptively simple question. Does information equal reality? Just before we look at the results from that poll, I want to read you a quote from an article which appeared in the June 2011 issue of Scientific American entitled Living in a Quantum World by Vlatko Vidro. The division between the quantum and classical worlds appears not to be fundamental. It is just a question of experimental ingenuity, and few physicists now think that classical physics will ever really make a comeback at any scale. If anything, the general belief is that if a deeper theory ever supersedes quantum physics, it will show the world to be even more counterintuitive than anything we have seen so far. Now, poll 82 ended on June 16, 2011. 68.5% agreed that information equals reality, while the remaining 31.5% did not. One of the claims I've made from the outset of this project echoes Vlatko Vidro's statement I've just quoted. How great it is to see that this idea has now officially moved into the mainstream. Five years ago when my book was published, this was one of the ideas that critics said proved I was a crackpot. As I said in Chapter 2, The Quantum Observer, the difficulties in determining where the dividing line between the quantum world and the macro world lies stem from the fact that it really is all part of the same continuum. Therefore, the observer is functioning at both the quantum level and as part of the physical world we see around us. This means that each of us is an observer, and each of us is creating our own unique reality, while we continue to participate in a shared consensus reality where the basic physical laws of our universe remain unchanged. Which takes us to these words, information equals reality. 
This is a highly useful phrase which I had not come across when I finished writing my book in 2006, but since then I've used it extensively in this blog. In 2009, when I created the PDF version of my book, which is available for download at 10thdimension.com slash digital, I did add some addenda items to the end of each chapter to outline the progress that had been made in my ideas becoming less out there than they seemed at first. Here's a paragraph I added near the end of chapter 2, which helps to explain this concept. Quantum mechanics is often portrayed as being completely unimaginable and supremely mysterious. I would propose that the way of imagining reality we're exploring here, which takes the indeterminate nature of subatomic particles and equates that idea with the simultaneously branching possibilities that we select from the probability space of the fifth dimension to create our fourth dimensional reality, helps us to understand how both can be part of the same idea. When quantum physicist Seth Lloyd, in his book Programming the Universe, talks about information and reality being interchangeable, I feel a strong resonance between that statement and what we're exploring in these pages. We are all navigating a sea of information, which from some perspectives may seem random and inexplicable. But within that sea of information, we can find patterns and shapes, fractals and chaos, parts that start and parts that stop, all encoded within the underlying fabric of our observed reality. Likewise, physicist Anton Zeilinger uses this phrase regularly. Here's a few entries where I talk about his groundbreaking work, Local Realism Bites the Dust, God 2.0, The Space-Time Tree, The Past is an Illusion, and Scrambled Eggs. There are numerous popular films that explore the idea that our reality equals information. We talked about one of those not long ago in my entry poll 77, What If the World's a Simulation? A recent film about this idea, and it's one that I really loved, is Source Code. If you'd like to read an analysis of this film from a quantum physicist perspective, here's a link from the Discover Magazine Cosmic Variance blog. Just a warning though, in order to discuss the underlying theories behind this movie, the link I'm giving you has to reveal the surprise ending. Now that's okay, I suppose, if you've never seen the film and have no intention of ever doing so. But if you're thinking of watching it, I really recommend you do so before reading this analysis. Finally, here's a link to an exciting article published June 1, 2011 in New Scientist, which gives the seal of approval to a new paper published by Raphael Busso and Leonard Susskind. This paper provides a formal proof for how the string theory multiverse and Everett's many worlds are directly equivalent. As I've admitted elsewhere, I've talked so much about this idea for the last five years that it seems a bit strange to have mainstream scientists only starting to accept it now. But once again, I'm thrilled to see ways in which the crazy ideas I've been promoting with Imagining the Tenth Dimension are continuing to move closer and closer to the accepted mainstream. How cool is that? Next time, we're going to pause and look back at the five-year history of my Imagining the Tenth Dimension project with an entry called Five Years Ago Today. My name's Rob Bryanton. Enjoy the journey.